Live from Vancouver, Canada, it's theCUBE. Covering OpenStack Summit North America 2018. Brought to you by Red Hat, the OpenStack Foundation, and its ecosystem partners. Welcome back, I'm Stu Miniman with my co-host John Troyer and you're watching theCUBE, the worldwide leader in tech coverage and this is exclusive coverage from OpenStack Summit 2018 in Vancouver. Usually this time of year it's a little bit overcast but for the second time the OpenStack Summit has been here, the sun is shining, it's been gorgeous weather but uh, there's, we're in here you know, really digging in and understanding it and one of the people I've gotten to know through this community especially is our, our, our wrap up guest for today, Sean Michael Kerner, who is a senior editor with eWeek yep. amongst other bylines that exactly. you have. So yeah. uh, pleasure to see you. Great, good seeing you too, Steve. All right, so we let you, you know, keep on the Toronto Blue Jays Thank hat you. representing. There We've we had, go. had quite a few Canadians uh, on our program well, here. Well, seeing as you are in Canada, it's not all that surprising. It, 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 yeah. It's lovely, they yeah. had you working on Victoria Day. Yeah, that's unfortunate, but I'll take Memorial Day off uh, in a week, <laughs> so it works out. Excellent, so Sean, just for our audience that might not know you, give us a little bit about your background. You've been to umpteen of these shows. Sure, and, uh, I, I've been uh, at the same publication roughly, I guess, 15, 16 years at this point, been writing uh, before there was cloud, uh, core Linux and open source stuff and networking. And then through the magic of uh, technology, uh, shifted a little bit to security, which is a core focus for me. I've been to every OpenStack summit since the uh, San Diego summit, I guess 2011, somebody can correct me afterwards. Uh, and I, I didn't miss the, uh, uh, the, uh, the, Sid the Sydney uh, summit uh, for various reasons. But yeah, been to a bunch of these things. Uh, so uh, interesting to see how things have shifted over the years uh, from uh, nothing to, uh, to certain heights to, uh, to where we are now. All right, yeah. So Bring us up to that as to where we are now. There's uh, attendance is down a little bit. They haven't been talking a lot about it, but quality of guests is here, uh, sessions, they've broadened out a bit of the scope. Uh, yeah. You know, we, we've been digging into it, but you know, want, want to get your take so far. Yeah, well, it's like, it's like anything else. You know, there's a standard uh, uh, hype cycles, as it were, there's, uh, and then there's the trough of disillusionment. I wouldn't call this the trough of disillusionment, but when you get to a certain plateau, uh, people just, uh, there isn't as much interest. In the early days, uh, I remember the, the San Diego summit I went to, they, uh, they didn't schedule it properly. They didn't know how many people they were going to have. And they had a line up around the corner and stuff. That was six years ago. But that's when uh, OpenStack was new. There was no such thing as the foundation and everyone was just trying to figure out what was what. And there was no clue. At this point, uh, cloud is a, a well understood thing. Uh, there are competitive efforts or complementary efforts as the foundation would probably like to put it, whether it's CNCF, there's the public cloud and it's, uh, it's different. There is, uh, uh, with all respect to the OpenStack Foundation and its uh, member projects, there's not as much excitement. This is now a, a stable, mature ecosystem. And because of that, uh, I don't think there's as much of a draw. When something is brand new and shiny, you, you get more of a draw. Uh, if they would have put the name blockchain in the title somewhere, maybe, maybe they would have had a few more. They, they put you know Kubernetes in there, which is fine, but no machine learning or artificial intelligence quite uh, yet, though that's a topic in there somewhere too. Yeah, John, you, you've been making a lot of comments this week uh, talking about we've we've matured and uh, you know the, the the lower layer pieces just work a bit more. Uh, give, sure. us your, give us your take. Yeah, I mean that's what it, the way it seems. Uh, there wasn't a whole lot of talk about the the, the release, the newest release, and uh, all the different components, even yeah. in the keynotes. But the people that we've talked to, both on the vendor and the customer side, I mean, they they have working production OpenStack environments. They're very large. Yeah. They require very few admins. They work. They're, they're embedded in telecom and uh, you know banking and et cetera. I yeah. mean, it, it, it's here, it's working. Yeah, that's that's also something that happened, I guess, maybe three cycles ago at this point, because they used to have the uh, release the same time as the uh, as the summit and the design summit, and it was together, so there was a, essentially a celebration of the release, and people would talk about the release, and then they disaggregated that. Um, and I think that took a lot of steam out of the reason why uh, you get developers to attend. Uh, so when you don't have the design summit, uh, there's the separate open dev or whatever, there's the forum, I don't quite understand how that works here now. Uh, and there isn't as much momentum. Yeah, I, I agree with you, there's been very little talk about Queens. Um, in each of the project update sessions I've been to, and I've been to a couple, uh, there's always been a slide on Rocky, what's coming. Because uh, I think, what is it, second milestone of Rocky at this point, so there's, there's some development, but at this point it's incremental feature add. There's no, you know, whiz, bang, okay, we're going to have flying cars and, you know, send a Tesla to outer space kind of, uh, you know, earth shattering news, literally, because that's not where it's at. It's just incremental tuck in features and stability and that kind of thing. 
All right. Uh, so so you, while well, you talk space and things like that, uh, br yeah. br brings to mind a, a certain attendee of the program that's actually been to outer space that made one of the uh, more yeah. notable uh, moments of the show so far. Uh, give us your take on Mr. Yeah. Shuttleworth. Uh, well, I, I'm a big fan of uh, Mr. Shuttleworth top to bottom. Uh, hey, Mark, uh, big fan, always have been. Uh, and, and he has his own opinion on things, of course. Uh, usually in a, in a keynote, you don't uh, tend to take direct aim at competitors, and he chose to do that, and it made some some people, you know, a, a little uncomfortable. I happened to be uh, sitting in the front row, uh, where I like to sit, and there were some Red Hat people, and uh, there were some uh, frantic emails going back and forth, and people were trying to see what was going on, etc. And I think, uh, for me, a little bit of drama is okay. You, you guys go to more shows than I do, and sometimes you get these kind of sales kind of things. But in an open community, there's um, almost an unwritten rule, which perhaps will be written after this <laughs> conference, uh, that uh, whether or not everybody is a business competitor or not, is that uh, this is you know neutral territory, as it were. Uh, and everybody's kind of friendly. In the exhibit hall, you know, you could say this, that, we're better, we're whatever, but on, on a stage, you don't necessarily do that, so there was some um, drama there, and uh, some of my peers wrote about that, I'll be writing about that as well. It's, uh, I prefer to write about technology and not necessarily drama, whether somebody's faster, better, stronger than others, you let the numbers prove them out. Uh, when we talk about open source, open source innovation, uh, without Canonical, there probably wouldn't have been an open stack. All the initial open stack uh, reference implementations are on Canonical. Uh, they've got a number of large public clouds as the Red Hat. I think they're, they're both have their technical merits and I'm sure on some respects Red Hat's better. I'm sure on other respects Canonical's better. But yeah, him standing up there and, and uh, beating on the competition was something that uh, across the 13 summits I've been to, I've never seen before. Uh, and one of, like we talked to, you know, my first OpenStack summit, it was uh, San Diego and uh, uh, the CTO of, uh, of VMware at the time came up, and VMware was not an OpenStack contributor at the time, they were thinking about it, and he was fielding questions about uh, how it was competitive and not, and, and he was still complimentary, so there's always been that kind of thing. So it's a little bit of a interesting shift, a little bit of drama, uh, and it gives this, this show something memorable, because you and I and others will be able to talk about this five years from now, et cetera. <laughs> well, so you, you talked about some of the things, something you'd write up, I mean, part of your job is to take things back to the readers of yeah, yeah. eWeek. I mean, what what are the th some of the things that the highlights that you're going to be covering? And the highlights for me was, uh, and Stu and I had talked about this at one point uh, off the camera, is a, this is not an open stack summit necessarily. They, they're calling it the open infrastructure. I had almost thought that uh, that they would change. We almost thought that they would change the name of the uh, the entire organization to the Open Infrastructure Foundation. So that whole shift, and I know the foundation's been talking about that since uh, Sydney last year, that they're going to shift to that, but that's the takeaway, is that the platform itself is not the only thing, um, is that uh, you know enabling the open infrastructure is nice, uh, they're going to try and play well, uh, and where, where it fits within the whole stack. Now, that gets very confusing, uh, because uh, talking about collaboration is all fine and nice, but that's not necessarily news. That's how you know the, the hot dog is made, and that's nice. But people uh, want to know what's in that dog and how it's going to work. So I think uh, it, it, this is a tougher show for me to, to cover than it has been in past years because there's been uh, less news. Uh, there's no new release. There was you know, a CATA 1.0 release and then there was the Zool project coming out on its own. The Zool project, they said it was 3.0. It was actually you know, March, so it was Zool 303. CATA container project, okay, interesting. We'll see how it goes. But uh, a tougher project, a tougher event for me to cover for that reason, and collaboration is all fine and nice, but uh, the um, CNCF uh, Cloud Native Con KubeCon event two weeks ago or three weeks ago had a, had a little bit more news, and a lot of it, same kind of issues come up here, so long-winded answer. Uh, tough, tough to come up with lessons learned out of this other than everyone wants to be friends. Uh, well, some people want to be, uh, and that collaboration is, is the way forward, but that's not necessarily a new message. Yeah, when, when I think about Kubernetes, we're talking about the multi-cloud world, and that, that's yeah. still, for the last few years, it's been, where does OpenStack really fit in that multi-cloud world? One of the things I've been a little disappointed, actually, is most of the time when I'm having a conversation, it's almost the, well, yeah, yeah there's public cloud, but we're going to claw things back, and I need it for governments, I need, 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 need yeah. all of these other things, and when I talk to customers, it is, I'm going to choose what I put in my data center, I'm going to choose how I use probably multiple public cloud sure. providers. It is not an anti-public cloud message, yeah, and yeah. it feels a little bit on the anti-public cloud message. I wonder what you're hearing when you talk to the users, when you talk to people when I talk here, to what, users, are you, what are you uh, getting the, vast the majority, feedback? Vast, yeah. vast majority of people, unless it's something uh, where there's uh, regulatory issues, or certain legacy issues are private 
cloud, uh, public cloud period. The private cloud idea is uh, gone, uh, or mostly gone. Like there are fewer, when I think of private cloud, it's really VMware, okay? We've got virtualized instances well, that's sitting what's there. What's OpenStack? OpenStack is fine, but how many people are running OpenStack but, as but a private cloud on oh, premise? Okay. Yeah, so what, what is OpenStack? Uh, when I think there? of OpenStack, uh, Oracle's public cloud. Uh, Oracle is not here, uh, surprisingly. <laughs> Oracle's public cloud, and you know, uh, Larry Ellison, who I know you, you guys have spoken to more than once on theCUBE uh, at various points, or Oracle World and other things. Uh, Oracle's public cloud, they want to compete against AWS. That's all uh, OpenStack. IBM cloud, all OpenStack. The various uh, big providers uh, out of China are OpenStack based, uh, OVH is here. So that's where it fits in, is that underlying infrastructure layer. Now, there's also, you know, Walmart uses it, Best Buy, all these other places, Comcast, et cetera, AT&T, but individual enterprises? Not so much. I, I have a hard time finding individual enterprises that will tell me we are running our own private cloud as OpenStack. They'll tell me they're running VMware, they might tell me they're running uh, Rev or, or even uh, some flavor of Citrix Zen server, but not a private cloud. They, they may have some kind of instances and then they'll burst out. Uh, but it's, it's not, it, I don't think private cloud uh, for uh, mid-tier enterprises ever took off the way that some people might have thought five years ago. That's interesting. Uh, from a, maybe let's go meta for a second. So yeah. as you, we've talked about a little bit about stuff you do and don't write about, right? You, you don't necessarily write, the VCs aren't here necessarily, but that's, you don't write about necessarily financial stuff, because you're- Well, some, you're sometimes, sometimes, but time. the, um, that was actually uh, the, the Portland Summit. Okay. Um, I, I did a panel uh, with uh, press and analysts uh, at the time, and then afterwards, there might have been four different VCs that came up to me and asked me what I thought about different companies, because they were looking at different things where they would invest. Uh, and I remember we looked at the board, uh, uh, one VC who shall remain nameless, and I said, you know what, we'll look at this board of all these companies, five years from now, uh, three quarters of them won't be here. Uh, I think I was probably wrong, because it's more than that. There are so many, and I wrote a story about, and I don't, I don't remember the exact name of it, but I wrote a story not that long ago, uh, an OpenStack Deadpool. There are, so, there are multiple companies that raised funding that disappeared. Uh, in the networking space, there were things like uh, PlumGrid, uh, they got minorly acquired uh, for assets by VMware, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, there was Pivotal, uh, Joshua McKenty, one of the co-founders of OpenStack itself, uh, and they got acquired by Cisco, but they would have collapsed perhaps otherwise. Uh, Nebula Computing is perhaps, uh, still, it still shocks me. They raised uh, whatever it was, 50 odd million, and somebody will correct me afterwards. Uh, with Chris Kemp, uh, you know, CTO of NASA who helped start it, gone. Uh, so there's been tremendous consolidation, and I think when uh, VCs lose money, uh, they lose interest really fast. The other thing you have to think about from the VC side, they don't write too much on the financial. Uh, my uh, good friend Frederick, who didn't make it, where are you Frederick, where are you? <laughs> uh, does more on that uh, funding side. Uh, but has there been a big exit uh, for an OpenStack company? Uh, not really, right. not really. And without that kind of thing, without that precedent, it's a tough thing, especially for a market that's now eight years old, give or take. Yeah. Nobody's had a big exit. Even, even the exits that had a decent exit, uh, yeah. you know, that bought, bought into, say, the IBMs and Cisco's of the world, and when you look a couple of years later, there, there's not much left uh, of, of those organizations. Yeah, it, it's, it's also really hard. People really don't want to compete against, well, some people want to compete against AWS, but if you're going to try and go toe-to-toe -to -toe with them, it's, uh, it's challenging. Okay, so what brings you back here every year? You're, 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 you're speaking at the show, yeah. you're talking to people. Yeah, uh, what you, brings you back year after year <laughs> is, uh, regardless of the fact that the momentum has probably shifted, uh, it's not in that early hype stage. Uh, OpenStack is core infrastructure, literally core infrastructure that runs uh, important assets, internet assets, whether it's uh, certain public cloud vendors, uh, large Fortune 500 companies or otherwise, so it's an important piece of the stack, whether it's in the hype cycle or not. So that brings me back because it's important. Uh, it brings me back because uh, I have a vested interest, because <laughs> I've written so much about it, so I'm curious to see how it continues to evolve. Uh, specifically, I'm speaking here on Thursday, uh, doing a panel on uh, defending the Cloud Castle security as a core competence and a core interest for me. Uh, and with all these uh, open stack assets out there, uh, how they are defended or not is a, a critical interest, because uh, 
in the modern world, cyber attacks are a given. Uh, everybody should assume that they're always under a constant state of attack and how that security works uh, is a core area of interest. That's why I'll, I'll keep coming back. Also keep coming back because I expect there to be a, another shift. I don't think we've heard the end of the OpenStack story yet. I think the shift towards open infrastructure will uh, evolve a little bit and it will come to a, 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 an interesting conclusion. All right. Last thing is, what's, what's your favorite question you're asking at this show? Have any final things you want to ask us as we wrap? Yeah, the, my favorite, well, ask you guys, what was the most interesting answer that you got from all the you know, great people that you interviewed? Because I'm sure some of it was negative and you got mostly positive as well. Yeah. Well, we are used to answering the questions, Stu. <laughs> um, well, you see, I'm used to being on the yeah, other side uh, here, right? <laughs> Well, I mean, like I do, I do say we, we got a lot of stuff up about some interesting edge use cases. Like I say, the, the practitioners I talked to were real. I was I'm yeah. always impressed by how few administrators it takes to run a huge, you know, OpenStack-based cloud once it's set up. So, I mean, that's some of the interesting things for me. Um, you, you asked folks about a public cloud a lot. Yeah, yeah I, so uh, it, it, it's been interesting. For, for me, it's, we, we've reached that certain maturity level. Um, I, I was looking at technology, what's, what's kind of the, the, the watermark that this is going to come to. It's, uh, we had said years ago, you know, I don't think you're going to have somebody selling a billion dollars worth of distribution uh, you know, on OpenStack. So um, you know, the, that, that story with you know, how Kubernetes and containers and everything fits in, yeah. um, OpenStack is part of the picture, and it might not be the most exciting thing, but then again, if you watch Linux, as, as long as most of us have, um, mm. look, Red Hat took a really long time to get a billion dollars, and it was much more than just Linux that got them there. Yeah. This still has the opportunity to be tooling inside the environment. We've talked to a number of users that use it, it's in there, it's not the, the flagpole, you know, we're an OpenStack company anymore, because there really aren't many companies saying that that is the core to their mission, uh, but uh, it's, it's still an important piece of the overall fabric of what yeah, we're covering. completely agree. All right, well on that note, Sean Michael Kerner, really appreciate you jo joining us. Um, please support good technology journalism because it is people like him uh, that, that help you. us understand the technology. Uh, I read his stuff all the time and always love chatting with him off the record and uh, right. dragged him on here. And yeah, Frederick uh, from TechCrunch, uh, we're, we are disappointed that you couldn't join us, but we'll get you next time. Uh, for John Troyer, I'm Stu Miniman. Be sure to join us for the third day tomorrow of three days of wall-to-wall -wall live coverage here from OpenStax Summit 2018 in Vancouver, and once again, thank you for watching theCUBE.